I'm Carrie Peters, a recognized thought leader in the Microsoft Dynamics community and a Microsoft MVP for business applications. Welcome to the Get Your New View podcast. Keep listening to learn how we work with frustrated Business Central and NAB users who struggle to use their system and find the answers that they need. We teach them to truly understand how the system can support their business processes to make immediate and lasting improvements. As a result, they get more done in less time, make better business decisions, and even love their system. In this next season of the Get Your New View podcast, I'd like you to meet even more members of our New View team who have brought examples of their favorite projects they've worked on with our customers to create efficiencies, utilize automation, and simply use even more of the features of their Business Central software. Everybody, please welcome Carrie Carroza, our accounting manager, who's here to talk to us today about business process improvements with accounts payable. Carrie, what kind of stories have you brought for us today? All right, Carrie, thank you for having me. And I am so excited to talk about accounts payable. It's one of my favorite things. And I do actually have one story about Susan. Susan was an accounting supervisor at um, a company that we worked with, and they recently had just lost their accounts payable employee. And this is something that we've seen quite a bit in the past few years um, where I'm actually able to step in is an accounts payable person, you know, leaves and maybe nobody is cross trained on how to actually get those invoices entered and paid, or maybe just no one has the capacity. I mean, you know, we all have our own jobs that we need to be doing. So just no one has the time to be able to step in and get those enter those invoices entered and paid. So Susan called us and they actually brought me in to help them catch up on their accounts payable make sure that vendors were getting paid on time. And they were also hoping that maybe while I was doing that, I could look at some of the processes that they were doing in Business Central and see how we could improve those or streamline them. So when I arrived on site, Susan you know, took me to the desk and showed me um, the stacks of invoices that needed to be entered, kind of showed me around the inboxes. And what they were doing was they were printing out uh, every single invoice that they would receive in their accounts payable inboxes. So they had stacks and stacks of invoices kind of sitting on that desk, and they were constantly finding stacks and stacks more of invoices that needed to be entered. So there was a little bit of confusion on what had been entered, you know, how how overdue things might be or how urgent they were. So I kind of weeded through these stacks of invoices to make sure that I could get them caught up. They also, you know, were having some issues with vendors not being paid on time, and they were then in turn getting some finance charges, late fees, and also just not able to take advantage of some pretty hefty discounts that they could have gotten. So after my first day on site, I think I already had, you know, a list of about 15 recommendations uh, that they could do in their accounts payable department. And I think about eight to 10 of those were things that either they or I could start implementing immediately just to help streamline that process and make it easier. So part of their process was that, you know, they'd print out all of their invoices. It would then go sit in a temporary filing cabinet after it was entered where it would wait to be paid. And then once it was paid, they would print the check stub. That check stub would then be matched again with the invoices in that temporary filing cabinet. And at that point, they'd staple everything together and it would go in a permanent filing cabinet, um, kind of in their, their back room area. So there was a lot of paper involved in the process, a lot of manual work. Um, and if you did want to find an invoice at any point in the future, you had to actually physically go to this filing cabinet you know, find the right filing drawer that you need to look in and look for that invoice. So a lot of frustration, a lot of paper being used, um, and it also didn't really allow for anyone to be able to work remotely. So the first two weeks that I was on site, um, I did get them caught up on accounts payable because that was the main focus, but I was also able to make just a lot of small changes to help the process. So a lot of people think that, you know, accounts payable process improvement needs to be a huge revamp to all these processes. It's going to take hours and weeks, and that doesn't necessarily need to be the case. There are so many little things that can be done, um, you know, just in an hour or 20 minutes while you're actually doing the accounts payable process that are really going to help to streamline accounts payable. So some of the things that we started with immediately was we said that we're not going to print invoices anymore. We have these all electronically for the most part. Let's organize them within Outlook in different folders. And these folders could consist of things like um, invoices with issues to address, or these invoices are ready to enter, or these invoices maybe have been entered but haven't been saved anywhere else. 
So really just managing the accounts payable invoices from the inbox instead of from printing everything out and having stacks of paper. We also were able to get them to save invoices electronically to SharePoint. Uh, in Business Central, it's actually really, really easy to just electronically attach invoices to a purchase invoice, um, to purchase orders, to any documents that you're entering, but it's not quite as easy with the older versions of NAM. So because we didn't have the ability to attach the documents within the system, we figured out a workaround of saving these invoices electronically to their SharePoint site. So that meant that instead of walking to a filing cabinet, everyone within the organization with the proper permissions could go to SharePoint and find these invoices at any time that they needed. Another really easy thing that we did was I would call vendors as we would get paper invoices in, and I would just ask them to send invoices electronically. And for the most part, this would take five minutes per vendor, and they were actually really excited because, you know, the sooner that they send us the invoice, they know that we're going to get it, enter it, and pay it. There's a lot more, you know, room for invoices to get lost in the mail. So most vendors were more than happy to actually make this transition and start sending invoices electronically. Because I'd say we still were getting about five invoices in the mail every day um, printed on paper. Something else that we could just stop doing was matching up the check stubs to the invoices that had been paid. So this information is all already in NAV or Business Central, um, you know, stored with the vendor ledger entries. So it's not necessary to physically match up that check stub to the invoices that have been paid and file those away together because we can just find that within the system. So that was another easy thing that we could immediately make the change on doing. Some things that we actually did within the system, within the ERP system, Business Central or NAV, was creating things like recurring purchase lines. They did use a lot of POs. Um, so for POs, we actually could create recurring purchase lines for specific items that were entered um, for each vendor. So that helped whoever was creating those purchase orders to be able to enter those purchase orders more efficiently. We also could create recurring purchase lines for vendors that we had GL accounts for. Uh, so a lot of invoices, you know, job ads, things like that, maintenance, we would get invoices in that would go to GL accounts after they got approved. And we were able to just, or I was able to really quickly, as I was entering these invoices, create these recurring purchase lines so that in the future, whoever's entering AP doesn't even have to think about where these go. There's already that recurring purchase line linked with the vendor. So they just have to click a button and the lines come in. So this will really help them uh, for consistency amongst entering invoices to the same GL accounts or the proper GL accounts each month. This also helps for consistency of line descriptions. So with recurring purchase lines, we can make sure that that line description is the same from month to month. And that was actually another thing that we were able to implement was, um, and this is something I think, Carrie, that you've probably seen as well. A lot of times when we have a company who has invoices, purchase invoices being entered, they just allow the description to be the general ledger account name. So if the GL account name is advertising expense, they'll just leave that as the description as they post the invoice. But a lot of times when you're actually analyzing what those expenses were, you want to know specifically what it was for. So maybe this was for Google ads or, you know, monster ads or things like this. Um, so we were able to just easily add descriptions into the purchase invoices, you know, without a lot of extra effort. So this just helped for more easy analysis of those, those purchase invoices at a later date. And then another thing we did, one of my other favorite uh, functions of Business Central is deferrals. A lot of times they maybe had a rent invoice that needed to be entered and paid in say November, but that they didn't want to hit the books really until December. So we could set up deferrals so that the invoice got entered and paid on time, but that rent expense would hit in the following month. Um, so this really helped them to, to be able to eliminate the amount of journal entries that they were making at month end by doing it upfront on the purchase invoices. And then finally, you know, as I mentioned, we were able to make tons of little improvements. So the, the last one that I have for you is uh, transitioning to paying vendors with electronic payments instead of checks. Um, you know, the more you write checks, the more there is a delay in actually getting those checks delivered to the vendors. 
I think especially now we're seeing a little bit more of a delay, um, you know, in mailing and, and getting checks in the mail. So we were able to contact some of our vendors or, you know, a lot of vendors actually have that information on their invoices for if you want to be able to pay them electronically. So by paying vendors electronically, we were able to help Susan and her department take discounts on invoices. And there just wasn't that delay in mailing checks. So, you know, some checks were getting lost in the mail or they were getting late fees, even though a check had been issued and sent a week ago. So by transitioning to more electronic payments, vendors were more than happy to help us, you know, be able to do this because they want to get their money as fast as possible. So that was one of the last things that we actually did. Um, just one of the small things that really helped to make a difference in their accounts payable department. Carrie, that is just such an amazing story overall. And I really just want to sit down and make a list of all of the things that you accomplished. And I know that we've we've done this with a, a number of different clients. And am I correct? It usually takes a, a week or two, depending on how much catch up needs to be done. It usually takes about a week or two to get everything set to right. Um, and in particular, for you to be able to transition from being on site at their offices to doing things remotely. So um, I know that one of the things that we always talk with our customers about is, you know, we'd be more than happy to be on site and work with you side by side, but it's going to be less expensive for you if we can work remotely. And with AP engagements, a lot of times because um, there's that catch up that needs to happen and we have to kind of figure out what the issues are that can be solved. And because people are operating fully with paper, that takes a little bit, but tell me, what makes it possible for you to spend that, uh, you know, one or two weeks and then do that work remotely until they've made their, their permanent hire? Yeah, definitely. And that's a great point. I think, like you mentioned, we found that it usually takes about a week or two to actually kind of make that transition. And a lot of that is because there's so much catch up to do. So a lot of the times the first couple days I'm just spending, you know, making sure that I know what the company's process is so that I'm entering things correctly and then getting them caught up so that they can get the vendors paid. Um, and then, you know, after we're caught up, we can finally start to focus on, okay, what can we be doing better? So, you know, in that, that giant list of things I mentioned, a lot of those actually helped the transition to be able to work remotely. And I definitely think that there is value on, you know, having us come on site and learning the processes and learning the company and seeing what we can do better. Um, but then, like you mentioned, you know, obviously that's going to be a little bit more cost efficient too if, if we can work remotely. So there's definitely benefit in um, having someone come on site and learn those processes and help make the improvements. And a lot of the things we did helped with that. So firstly, not printing any invoices. That was one of the main reasons that we had to come into the office because they said, you know, we're doing everything paper based today. So we really do need someone on site. And I think a lot of companies too don't realize that they can become paperless. And as I mentioned, it's not this huge project or huge month project that, you know, is going to take time away from everyone. It's things that can be done in little steps. So all those little steps that I mentioned helped us to get to that point. Um, and it didn't really take away from anything else that was happening. So everyone else was still able to focus on their own jobs. I was still able to get accounts payable entered. It was just those little steps we took to be able to uh, transition to paperless. And I think, you know, originally, too, some companies are a little bit skeptical about having someone work remotely or transitioning to completely paperless because they're so used to having the paper invoices. So I think once they see the little steps that we can take to help them make that transition, they feel more comfortable with how that process is going to look in the future. Um, because we definitely want to make sure, too, that we're taking into account all of the little, you know, intricacies or needs of that company to make sure that the process we're presenting for paperless is going to work for them. So just making sure that everyone's on board with it and then helping implement that process just helps everyone in the company get a little bit more comfortable with, with how that paperless and remote process can look. Right. So ultimately with a project like this, the goal is to get them caught up to create process improvement that they can absorb in, in that time period that you're there and then to hand it off in a way that's clean and organized and ready for that new person that they hire, whoever's going to take that over, right? Yes, exactly. So then now when that, that new accounts payable person came in, um, Susan was still able to do her job. She didn't really have to spend a whole lot of time doing any sort of accounts payable training. I was able to 
show everything that we had done. I had process documentation written out. Um, that was part of what I had done during the engagement was after we figured out what those processes were, I actually documented everything so that we knew here are our processes, here's what the new accounts payable employee is going to be trained on. So I was able to train that person um, on our completely paperless process. And, you know, it's funny because that person had no NAVR Business Central experience previously. So what they were learning from me is, you know, just what they're going to know going along. So they're always going to know the best practices for everything. They're going to know how to use recurring purchase lines. They're going to know how to use deferrals. Um, and they're going to know how to do everything electronically. So lucky for them, they didn't have to deal with any any printing of paper invoices or any filing of invoices uh, in the building either. So yes, I think, you know, like I mentioned, first couple days, usually just getting caught up, learning the processes, maybe creating that recommendations list. Um, and then, you know, end of that first week, some of those improvements already are implemented, like recurring purchase lines, saving invoices to SharePoint, and then by that second week, that's when we're really making sure that we have a solid plan for the transition to, to work remotely, but also still catching up on accounts payable and making sure that we're able to look at some other, you know, maybe finance processes. So there were a couple other processes like intercompany transactions and um, what was the other one? Credit cards at month end, which is always a big pain point. So there were some other processes that they really wanted to look at, but they just couldn't yet because, you know, they were so stuck in needing to get accounts payable entered and paid on time. So by freeing up time for that, we were able to look at some other finance processes in the company as well. That's fantastic. Uh, I always say that because I'm a former controller and I always say that the key to a really strong accounting department is to have a very strong uh, AP person. That if you if you have somebody who's very much in control of the workflow of all those documents and where things get booked and when they get booked, that's going to affect your ability to be able to close your month in a, a faster way. So that's something else that usually comes out of these type of projects, right? Is, is once that gets under control, they have some effects that uh, go into month end, right? Absolutely. So if you think about it, like you mentioned, um, a lot of your transactions that are getting posted into your general ledger are going to come from purchase invoices or invoices from purchase orders. So if those are entered to the wrong GL accounts or for the wrong amounts um, or even the wrong dimensions, that takes a lot of fixing at month end because first you need to review and find all of those errors and then you need to figure out where they need to be corrected and actually make those adjusting entries. So I I completely agree that it's it's so important to have an accounts payable employee who is properly trained on what can all be done with Business Central because a lot of people just don't know what the functionality is. So if you don't know what you can do with the system, you're not going to know to do it. You don't know what you don't know. So yeah. that's a lot of what we'll do is we'll come in and say, hey, did you know that you could do this um, and just, you know, help them be able to take advantage of what what is there in the system. And as you mentioned, usually this uh, results in a faster month on close, which we all love. Absolutely. So one thing I always like to talk to people about is the level of experience with all of our senior resources, that they've got a lot of experience with these things to help with these type of projects. So what about your particular experience makes this um, something that is something that gets done faster and, and easier and more accurately? So I think I kind of have a, a unique story when it comes to accounts payable. Um, my position was never just an accounts payable clerk or accounts payable employee. I was always some sort of accountant, financial accountant, staff accountant, um, intermediate accountant. Because I was at a smaller company as part of my financial responsibilities, I always got stuck with the responsibility of entering accounts payable. So especially when a company is growing, the amount of invoices that come in are exponentially higher. So I was always looking for ways where I could just get accounts payable done as quickly and accurately as possible so that I could then focus on the other work that I had to do. Um, so in doing this, you know, I was able to learn a lot of the best processes to make sure that things were getting entered, one, quickly and also accurately. Because if anyone was going to have to go back at month end and make adjustments to those entries that were booked wrong, it was going to be me. So I wanted to make sure that I was entering things quickly, accurately, so that we could close the month end and I wouldn't have to spend more time on accounts payable. Um, so I think for me, you know, I, I always did accounts payable. It wasn't something that I, I didn't enjoy doing, but I just wanted to make sure that I could get that done as quickly as possible. 
and make sure that I was still getting my other work done. Um, a lot of the companies are, like I mentioned, just saving tons and tons of paper. So I think just overall in the end, yeah, that experience that I've been able to gain myself has been really valuable in, in helping other accounts be able employees along the way. That's fantastic. Well, I love the level of success that this kind of work is bringing to our customers, Carrie. Thanks so much for sharing your story with us today. Thank you for having me. I'm Carrie Peters. Thank you for tuning in to the Get Your New View podcast. For more episodes like this on YouTube, click the subscribe button and ring the bell to ensure that you get notified whenever new content comes out. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please share an honest review on Apple Podcasts. If you are ready to rethink today for tomorrow, look for the link below and contact us to speak with our expert team. You won't find the level of no-nonsense real-world experience we offer anywhere else, and we're here to put that experience to work for you. Do you think you could use more features of your software if you just knew how? Are you frustrated with inefficiency that never seems to get better? Did your team ever really get good training to understand how to use your business software? Do you suspect there just has to be a better way and you don't know what it is? We believe every company can benefit from increased efficiency and higher utilization of their software and that it's possible to have fun while learning exactly how to do that. The experts at NewView Strategies work with frustrated Business Central and NAV users who struggle to use their system and find the answers they need. We teach them to truly understand how the system can support their business processes to make immediate and lasting improvements. As a result, they get more done in less time, make better business decisions, and even love their system. Please contact us at getyournewview.com to get started.